I'm Susan Parenti with the School for Designing a Society. This is Queen Victoria. <laughs> We'd like to invite you to participate in a three-week educational experiment that we call Construct Your Humanism. Around 30 people will be coming from around the world in order to live together, cook and clean together, think, care, and construct action plans that will protect and support our humanism, especially while we work in systems that are dehumanizing. A humanist is a person who values the well-being of all living systems above all else, and that can be human and non-human. So in 2017, a humanist is a person who's sticking her neck out for humanity, and she could be you. So we invite people from all the caring fields, that's parenting, um, business, small businesses, um, governance, healthcare, education, these are all caring fields. This will take place June 11th through July 2nd in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, which is the home of me, Queen Victoria, the School for Designing Society, and Patch Adams, who is one of the teachers. For more information, check designingasociety.net. Thank you. And these approximate 30 people lived together in an eight-bedroom house, so there was a lot of interaction. And Construct Your Humanism was is built as a kind of um, a response to what we consider an emergency, which is that people have really good intentions when they get into the caring fields to be full of compassion and empathy and humor and play. But they notice that many of these fields, these systems, actually don't reward compassion, don't praise you if you're empathetic actually criticize you if you spend a lot of time with your client or your patient or your student. So in a certain way, your tendency towards humanism, your value of the living creature above all else, is slapped, is punished in many systems that are considered social systems. And this is an emergency. This means people are going into those fields unprepared for the reactions that are going to happen to them if they show a commitment to the well-being of living systems human and non-human. So what we have on this video is approximately 14 or 15 excerpts from these action plans that the participants created. Um, and these action plans are policy ideas or strange projects, um, questions about reframing things. Um, you'll see in the excerpts that the people are trying to um, delineate what are the problems and then try to figure out if not a solution then at least an idea that would be fun to play with as we try to figure out the solutions to these problems. We also tried a technique that you'll see, you'll see people using the expression false statement. A false statement is a statement of a desire, something that you want, it's not there yet in the current system but you articulate it as if it is actually there. And someone would go, no, that's false, that doesn't happen. And you go, yes, and I'm going to change the system so that it is going to become true. So people are articulating their desire for what is not there yet, but that they want to have happen as if it's actually happening. And then they came up with some version of an action plan. So thank you. Um, we're trying another session of Construct Your Humanism in June. 2017. Okay, so we're the school for designing a society, okay, um, and yet we're using the word construct, and we could have said design your humanism. You can work to make oneself more humanistic, and I could suggest that what you decide becomes part of your constructing. Construct doesn't mean you found the way and that's the way you're going to do it. It means you're always trying to look. Always looking and always constructing, not loyal to anything that's happened in the past, but using the past to get you to the new exploration. Another thing that I think with uh, you're bringing in the word construct is um, that there's a tendency, if I'm really thinking about my intentions of how I want to be, um, that I don't see necessarily that the effect of what I'm doing is in sync with my intentions. So if you're constructing your humanism, it would be different if you were doing it among haters as if, than if you were doing it among uh, agreeers. 
In both cases, you could construct your humanism. What would a humanist artist be like? Or a humanist teacher? The most vibrant activism that's going on is usually based on uh, really simple, basic notions of being human and humane and nonviolent um, or anti-violence. Water is life is a slogan of a very vibrant activist effort to prevent a pipeline, an oil pipeline that would endanger a river right. in sacred land. And it seems like one of the most basic concepts one could even talk about. Do you have to tell someone water is life? And yet, we've got these companies that are pouring money and have great stakes in denying that water is life, right. in endangering right. water and endangering life. Right. The arts give me both fuel to understand the horror mm -hmm. and directions of solutions. To already have a job like a teacher, okay, whatever, is a lot and full of self-doubt probably and self-criticism. To add into that, that maybe an aim is to be a humanist teacher. Humanist teacher, you're saying, might be overwhelming, but it also might be galvanizing. You know, I see myself, for instance, deciding on some response pattern to phone calls or emails and things like that. And I don't respond very well. I take too much time and I don't answer the phone. But then when I think to myself, wait, Susan, this is not just about responding to an email. This is creating a humanistic well-being that people get attended to, that their thought feel themselves important in my presence. I feel... And so when I raise the stakes by thinking, this has to do with humanism. It doesn't have to do with communication. It has to do with enabling a person to feel respected and visible and interesting. So then I find that I answer those phone calls much faster. I do the emails because now I'm trying to be a humanist and not just a communicator. I look and see that systems have a capacity for generating problems. But very often they don't have the capacity for solving the problem. It's just like they keep producing the problem, particularly if it's profitable for them. They produce the problem, produce the problem, produce the problem. So where we get interested in design and composition and constructing is because we think that a person, when she's designing, can bring something to the situation that wasn't there until she thought of it or decided on it. I was trying to say that humanism is not just the value, the kind value, the niceness that humanism sees that it's in relation to systems and that thus you become humanist when you realize you need a strategy for protecting those values. If it was just a matter of an attitude to solve the problem, having a better attitude, or maybe just working harder, these are all good things and often a good attitude will change a situation or working harder will. But I think the problems we're talking about, about being punished for being humane inside the social systems, they're not solved by attitude, by uh, common sense. They're solved by design thinking. I certainly thought, what am I doing that's part of the problem? Oh, well, yeah. And that to change a habit, you Buddhists call it mindfulness, the more, and I would certainly agree that if you are constructing, the more you are present and really looking at yourself and the results of yourself, so if you can tell somebody and, and they're not acting like they know what you mean, you don't keep telling them the same thing. You might try to learn them better and then have a better discussion a month later. The convoluted trap is that when you are nice and kind, you're very often, as I said again and again, you're punished or criticized in some way. So doing the, the nice and simple thing has got to be mixed up with a strategic way of thinking about it um, that isn't so simple and direct. It's more like, okay, wow, this system won't let me be nice and kind, so what do I do? Do I give up being nice and kind? Do I give up the simple thing? No, I do the simple thing, but within a thought-through strategy. And that's why I think of it as a design or composition tool, really. We've talked about that expression, you know, um, be the change you wish to see in the world. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. If somebody does that and thinks, I want to be this glowing, inclusive human being, 
then they're going to bump into a lot of trouble. They're going to get in a lot of trouble with that attitude. And then, so that, that mandate to be the change you wish to see is not sufficient for me. I mean, I don't know how you think about it. I just think it's like, yeah, it's a trap. Yeah, let's be kind and nice, and then let's get punished, and let's, get, let's talk about justice, and then let's get hit on the head by the cops. And instead of people taking that into the equation, if I'm trying to be the change I wish to see, the system's going to respond this way. Now what do I do? year student uh, as a medical student and as a patient I visited many hospitals and many patients who I saw looked very sad and very depressed and also uh, doctors and nurses looked very um, serious mm -hmm. and they are very busy they look very busy and uh, I found that the at the hospital, we shouldn't be happy. We shouldn't be laugh. We shouldn't laugh. So the atmosphere at the hospitals doesn't allow us to be laugh, to to enjoy. So here is my first statement. A hospital is a peaceful place. Uh, patients don't do anything when they are at the hospitals. Because uh, everything can be, uh, should be, will be done by the staff. So they cannot feel their meaning of their existence at the hospitals. But uh, playing some roles at the hospitals by themselves can, can help them to feel their meaning. Peacefulness uh, can be provided by people. I think at the hospitals, uh, there are not enough time for doctors for, and for patients. So I, I, thought I, I made uh, three steps. And then when I become a doctor, to do cloning for my patients, I will practice cloning. Practice, practice. And then I will find companies uh, for who agree with me, and then I want to make a crowning group at my place. Mm -hmm. I will make a place uh, where is where there are doctors and nurses and other medical staff, and I name this place as Med Cafe. This at uh, this place, this place is open to the public. So people can come into this cafe, like a like normal cafe. But uh, the difference is that there are medical staffs. So when the when people come to this cafe, they, uh, they can talk about their concerns about their health and not only physically but also mentally, so that people uh, people feel don't need to go to the hospital. Uh, hospitals are not too busy. Step three. <laughs> this is my last goal. This, this is my goal. One my goal. Make a peaceful hospital. Yeah, when I when I'm afford to <laughs> make a hospital, I wanna make our hospital peaceful. My hospital is not so big, like a small house. <laughs> and then uh, my hospital is located in the, in the community. So I want, to, I want people to come to my hospital with no hesitation, with no stress. And then behind my hospital, there are gardens. I, I don't know, but maybe Japanese garden. <laughs> and then my garden, uh, everyone can take care of my garden. I will uh, take into my hospital uh, alternative uh, treatments, such as not only planning, but also like, uh, music therapy and pet therapy. So m many kinds of uh, uh, treatments I want to treat, I want to take it. At the waiting room in my hospital, 
I will I will make a place which is like a cafe. So they can uh, drink coffee and then talk to nurses and some medical staff before meet a doctor. People who come to my hospital are not hospitalized people. <laughs> Instead of using hospitalized people, I want to make a people who are peacefulized people. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Paul Tushaka. I'm a family physician in Toronto. I've been practicing for 48 years. D I S P Y D. What a funny name. Death imminent. Stop procrastinating with your dharma. It took me many years to get my own style of practice. What? I did corporate medicine when I was in the States. It was awful. That was many years ago. Why did I come here? Because of fear. My own fears. For 48 years, I've been in fear of the regulatory body. So fear is related to ego, to being criticized, and it's also related to external factors which you can't control. A few years ago, they suspended a doctor for three months and fined him because he hugged the patient. So the point is, we are committed, and I am committed, to lifelong learning. So my problem here, I had fear of the regulatory body, how do I transmit this knowledge to others? And how do I convince my colleagues to take more time to see their patients? I am Zoe Quinones from Puerto Rico. I'm a medical student on my clinical rotations. My presentation is titled, The Four C's in Medicine. My purpose is to plant a seed. My false statement is that Every new medical student has an awareness of the four C's in medicine. Passion, care, commitment, and consideration. My long-term goal with my project is to integrate into the curriculum of medical school, schools a course in compassionate medicine. La glorificación de la carrera. El hecho de que le dicen a los estudiantes de medicina, ustedes están salvando vidas, son mejores que cualquier otro ser humano. Okay. Okay. My name is Eloise O'Leary. Uh, I'm 20 years old. I'm from Seattle, Washington. And I'm not a medical student. And I don't have a project yet. That's how I've been thinking of it lately. I've got a ways to go. I've got a lot of tools now. Something Patch likes to talk about, which I hadn't put very much thought into in my life at all until this point, is self-esteem. Question of it. He's got a little sound bite um, that three percent of adults. I don't know if that's in the U.S. or if that's a more global number. Three percent of adults will tell you that they have self-esteem. Um, he had us do the exercises. You know, you hug yourself and you say, "I love me. I love me." In the mirror, "I love me." Um, he told you to say it as if you believe it, as if you could believe it. Um, I suppose maybe, I, maybe the assumption was that none of us do. Um, but it's also something Patch talks about, but of course it's not something only Patch knows, that people are incredibly complex and complicated and multifaceted individuals. And my question has been, is, it, is the question, do you have self-esteem? Does that have to be a yes or no question? Okay, that's a good Okay. 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 today what can I do for you <gasps> you want me to dance <laughs> uh, okay wait wait wait
Doctor Herrera, what are you doing? I, I was dancing. Come with me now. I need to talk with you. Okay, teacher. Don't tell me, teacher. I am a doctor. Okay. First, why are you spending so much time with that patient? And why were you dancing? Don't tell me that it was because the patient likes to dance. You look like a girl. Stop doing weird things. You have to behave like a doctor of our university and if you don't want, well, it's easy. You can go to another school, but now you are in the best one. And doctor, don't try to explain all the things to your patients, especially to 345AAWQ129. He has not much education and his insurance doesn't cover all the treatments that he needs. But well, I will give you a gift for protect yourself. I call it the Dr. Armour. Yes, use it, please, use, use it. And now, uh, go back and continue working. Go, 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 go. and I put the script for the presentation under your computer. Good luck! But uh, I don't know what the presentation is about. Uh, what is the well, project? Me neither. Bye! <laughs> Bye! Uh, uh, well, welcome! Uh, this is my uh, presentation. Uh, well, first... I will have this music and this funny band. If in any moment you're bored of my presentation, you can see my ponies and imagine stories and the music is for help you to imagine things. So, let's begin. I am Alvaro Herrera Lopez. I'm a human, but I'm not totally sure of that. I'm a clown. I'm a student. First, the problems that I want to tap with my project are the impersonality in healthcare attention, the shortness of time, the prejudice, like gender, social class, sexual orientation, nationality, educational level, and all the typical things that we saw every day. And the standardizing how healthcare providers should act. And with this, we have a loss of individual abilities that could contribute for a better attention. For example, artistic abilities that could increase the comfort of the patient. Like that for your patient. Uh, the conflict of interest. If people don't get sick, who will come to my consult? Uh, another problem is that people understand the well-being only as the absence of illness and pain. They are not aware about the importance of the well-being in all that offers of life, like physical health, mental health, education, culture, and a long list. 
another problem, the unwillingness to make changes, the status quo. And the final problem. No, I have two problems more. The rivalry between medical schools. I have this problem in Chile. It's like I'm studying in one university and I and I cannot have friends in the next school that is one kilometer from my school because they are our enemies. <laughs> and the last problem. Many students believe that they are the only ones who disagree with the system and feel very lonely and thinking that no one helps them. But with all these problems, I have two false statements that are Doctors see to the well-being of their patients and med students have the opportunity of meet people who want to change the system and work for it together. Yeah. And with all these ideas is how my project was born. <laughs> cool! Like the project of Sebastian. That's me and this is the Support group for medical students. <laughs> 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 that, that was our dream better, right? <laughs> 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 Why I have it well. <laughs> Thank you. For these discussions. Okay. <laughs> it's a group for all the med students that don't like the current healthcare system, the med educational system, and want to change it. <laughs> it's a space for shared experiences, good or bad experiences, and create forms to make little earthquakes. It's uh, a good concept in my country. I love earthquakes. <laughs> for changing the things that we don't like and create conscious in people. The objectives are have a safe space for med students to share all their feelings and desires in their career, create innovative ways to preserve the system, and develop projects for med students to know more things about the typical problems of our population. And my first ideas for perturbation. For general, Population, performances in public spaces, and for many students, the human life. And here you have a picture, this is an earthquake, I don't know if you know how it works. And that is what I want to do, basically, with the, with the medical earth. I want to break the layers of the medical earth. So, the first idea is called What do you want from me? is the first performance. And we have a public space with many people and one man student. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's not enough, so two men students. And, well, three is a good number, so three men students in a public space. And then, we have a bunch of charmies. <laughs> uh, why? Well, the idea is simple. Those mad students, <laughs> are very similar to me. <laughs> they will ask to the people, Hey, what do you want from me? How can I help you? And the people will write uh, their answers in the codes of the magic students yes, and their skin. And. Well. <laughs> That's a serious presentation, right? <laughs> For me, it has a polyfunctionality because the performers that will be that are going to be med students will have information about the desires of their future patients, and people will feel that their needs are being heard. 
if you break the big wall called the professional distance, uh, for the performance is uh, an exercise of being receptive and accept without judgment what people want to say, and also for conservative doctors who see that, it will be a moment of, what the fuck is this? Okay. <laughs> My second idea is called an atypical consultation. First, oh, we have a public place. <laughs> Surprise! And then a desk <laughs> and a med student. <laughs> <laughs> Did you imagine that? No. <laughs> um, a performer patient. <laughs> so, the idea here is. Well, I will add to the script because it's not my presentation. God gave me that. <laughs> the doctor will begin a normal medical interview, like asking for the name, the weight, the la la, all the basic things. But suddenly, we'll ask, what is your favorite song? And, voila! <laughs> the doctor plays the favorite song of his patient. Other examples could be asked for the favorite food, favorite color, etc. But why? <laughs> well, for me, this is all the good for the conservative doctors again. I hate them. Basically, and it shows that doctor could be more than a pres uh, prescription writer. It could be fun and encouraging for people who see future doctors doing atypical things. It's a way to show that the well-being is not only absence of pain or illness. Doctors and people have to consider their needs of fun, education, culture, exercise, etc. And. The second part of my project, of the things that I have now, but it's the beginning, is the idea of human library in med schools. All of you know what is a uh, human library? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's nice. So, why? The objective is create conscious in students about how is to live with certain conditions. Uh, like illnesses, uh, discrimination, well, uh, parentheses. I love this man who is a is an artist from Venezuela. Now he lives in Chile. He is Daniel Arzola. He calls himself an activist. Activist. Wow. Yes, and he has a lot of this illustration about discrimination of the LGBTQ community, in, especially in Latin America. Uh, so, what I need for this project, I need human books, I think that it's easy to find in my country. Uh, in every country, we have, every person has uh, his or her own story to tell. And I need the will of med school for recitals that could be difficult. So, I will do my best. And what does this project offer? It's an opportunity of knowing about the life of some people in, different con in a different context than medical consultation. Here the relation is the opposite of a medical consultation. Here is the patient or the user or the client who has the power to tell all the things that he or she wants to say. And Preguntas <laughs> at hospitals. <laughs> I believe that Google Translator was good. Okay, so I'm Anna and I'm from Poland. People call me Anya. So I just graduated from med school and I'm a medical doctor right now. The, the way she was treated in the hospital, it was, I mean, it's, it's just heartbreaking. It was terrible. Like, I spoke with her mom several times. 
when she saw the surgeon for a consultation before, like, but this is a serious surgery because they have to take, take out her entire pancreas, part of her duodenal, part of her stomach, and part of her liver. So it's pretty serious. And the surgeon saw her for 10 minutes <laughs> before the surgery. A few days later, she was in the operating theater and they cut out basically half of her internal organs. Nobody even took time to like explain what is going on and like what, what did the doctor see in those scans. None of the doctors had like even like any, any time to like explain anything to her. Doctors should be more considerate, and I'm just, yeah, it's just shocking about like, but like just what what happened to her. It's like your medical violence, obstetric violence. This is similar. Yeah. So my full statement is that uh, everyone is treated with dignity, and at first my full statement was that all the patients should be treated with dignity, but then I kind of extended it to everyone because like, I know that like, other doctors or medical students are treated the same way, so it's not only the patients. And I think this problem is on every level of healthcare system in Poland, and people just, I, I don't know the root of the problem. I think that Polish people in general, they just don't trust each other enough. Um, when I came here, I didn't really know what to expect. The thing that I learned here is that um, in order to make a change, I think you have to cooperate and you have to depend on other people and you're not alone. And there's a lot of people like me who see a lot of issues with the healthcare system and want to change no. it. So now I, I don't feel like I'm so alone. So, hi, my name is Julio. You haven't called me who. Uh, most of us are like uh, neglected children in our houses alone with no one to play with us. And that's the way we see our own bodies. We don't think about them. We just give them what they need or what we think they need and leave them be while we work. The first step is asking questions, making them question themselves. So the second part after the questions is to encourage people to get experiences. I'm Ji Young from Korea, and I'm studying psychology in university in Korea. But can you guess what it is? Hospital. It's my dormitory of my high school. Mm -hmm. uh, As you can see, they don't respect our students. They just want us to study. And also, I saw a TED talk clip named "How Dare You Educate Girls." It's about in Afghanistan, like in underdeveloped countries, like under like Afghanistan, educating girls are prohibited, so that girls have to go additional school, risking their lives, literally risking their lives. So my first statement is: there is no limit in access to superb education. For example, in Korea, there is named Passion College. There is E <laughs> missed out. <laughs> Whatever in Passion College. It's based about movie named Accepted. There is a movie like uh, it's a kind of university, but students are became professor. But at the same time, there are students. They learn whatever they want, but they also teach whatever they want. So they can communicate and they can share their interest and their knowledge. Hi, I'm Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, and for my project, I was really looking about um, how much time you spend. I can like with doctors and patients. I was always taught that if something bad happened to you and it was never resolved, then it would manifest in the body. And um, this would come out later in this some form of sickness. And so my false statement is that every medical professional has adopted their patient's life events. That whoever is trying to help you could have enough time to really understand you. Hi, my name Hi. is Sebastian from Colombia. I am a medical student. Uh, and now I'm going to present my project. It's Clinic of Humanizing Labor. To change the world, we must first change the world the way the babies are being born. There are many ways of aggression against women. Today we are going to talk about obstetric violence. Uh -huh. But what is 
is the owning of the body and reproductive process of woman by the health person. It is expressed by uh, deshumanizing treatment, abuse of medicalization, and pathologizing a natural process that brings the loss of autonomy and ability to decide freely about their bodies and sexuality. This has a negative impact in women's life quality. I, I want that you imagine that you are in this place, okay? And feel. This is the question, what is humanizing labor? Is a respect labor, where the moon decides over her body. Drugs and medical procedures are not used if not really necessary. As you can say, it's not used if, if the woman needs it. No. And is really necessary, yes. In the humanizing labor, whose recommendation are accomplished, <laughs> uh, it may be in a place that the mother chose, not necessary in water. I believe that the labor is the most important moment of the human being's life. Uh, it is the beginning of the life. It is the process that determines who we are and how we behave. To respect the moment and feeling it with love, guarantee the best medical practice for the mother and the baby with let us create more human societies transforming reality as we know it. Uh, my name is Daniel Dixon, and I'm presenting a project eliminating all labels. Let me explain. I have two foundations. One is writing a book, and the other is creating a non-profit international challenge society. I think I should explain what I'm doing. <laughs> this, I had a major stroke at age 28. I was given this by the speech department because a major symptom of mine is called dysarthic speech. Instead of describing a person using a mobility aid or having an illness as being disabled or handicapped, that same person could be described as being physically challenged. I am Mati Ritter. I am from Paraguay. I am 23 years old and I am a third year medical student. I want to share with you how I think I, I have constructed my humanism this month. I keep using my father for everything in this, in this month. Like, so my father is the most amazing human being I've ever met. He works in the system, but within it. He needs it to survive, but doesn't get involved as much as other people. We have never, I mean, we've had rough times, but we have always had food and education in my house, that nothing ever um, was missing for us. For By writing all of this, I realized he's the humanist I want to be. I have, I have two false state, statements for that. That are the first one is all people in Paraguay have access to quality school education, and the other one is Paraguayan youth think critically and generate critical actions with that. Buenas tardes. Um, good afternoon. Mi nombre es Andrés. My name is Andrés. Yo soy el líder y coordinador del grupo Dibujando Sonrisa. I'm the leader and coordinator of the group uh, Drawing Smiles. Y vengo a presentar el programa que se llama Más Capaz. And I'm presenting the program called More Capable. Uh, in society exists an uh, inclusivity of all persons with different capacities. The desire is that there's the same uh, equality between normal people and persons with different capacities. My intention is in that not to make it uh, another approach to capitalism. Un par de fotos que hemos realizado. Some more pictures of activities we have made. Soy Estefano Sarmiento. Soy de México. Y voy a hablar de Kumba. ¿Qué es Kumba? Talleres de expresión corporal. So I'm going to talk about Kumba. That in one of the areas of Kumba is Consciousness begins with the body, and there are workshops of corporal expression. So it's uh, dancing with mindfulness. 
you can connect with your own body. So here's one of those. In the own like connection with your body, you can be imaginative and creative, and that's the benefits are also the possibilities to change and the possibilities of the empowerment you can get with your own body. We'd like to invite you to participate in a three-week educational experiment this June 2017 that we call Construct Your Humanism. Around 30 people from around the world will come here and we'll live together, we'll eat, cook and clean together, think, work and construct action plans to protect and support our humanism especially since many of us work in systems that are dehumanizing. Everyone from the caring fields is welcome to participate. That could be education, healthcare, social services, governance, parenting, small businesses. It takes place in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, which is the home of me, Queen Victoria, and Derek, and other people, plus Patch Adams, who is going to be one of the teachers. The dates are June 11th through July 2nd, Construct your humanism. You can see more information at the site designingsociety.net.